So, welcome to uh, a video about my uh, food forest, terrace garden. I like to call it my food forest. Uh, I only started filming in January this year, so I'm still fighting some of these tools. But also, uh, when I started to build my food forest, I only made pictures. So, um, I wanted to create a video about what I did and where it stands now. Because, in the end, I think I spent around about six months working in the garden. <laughs> So what I did is uh, I decided to, to make three videos. One is uh, from the start in 2020, the autumn, where I, I planted my first about 40 trees. The second part is about the autumn of 2022, where I basically constructed uh, a lot of terraces on my hill. And the third part is a live video from about two weeks ago. Beautiful day. It almost seemed like spring arrived. Um, and that one is like a, a walk through the current status. After that, if you like this uh, video and you want to uh, follow uh, the development in the future, you can be sure that uh, I, will, I will post a video in spring, uh, summer and autumn and winter probably again. Because uh, I can't wait to see how it's going to develop. Thank you. So, when I bought the property in the be beginning, it was only a hilltop. But when I bought the farm, with the barns and the land, I knew I wanted to create something like a food forest or a terrace garden. So the first thing I did, I started cleaning the first terraces. The upper terrace, it was full of wild young trees and I wanted to plant uh, fruit trees. So I cleared the small trees and I left only the larger ones including the existing fruit trees because these these trees they don't not only provide uh, shade for new plantings but also they have a function in reinforcing the old uh, terrace walls which are made of natural stone now the terrace below was actually like impenetrable forest and cleaning that piece took me a lot of time. Everything by hand. But by November 2020, I finished up cleaning and I had someone dig the first 40 holes with an excavator so I could plant my first trees. Before planting, I followed all the rules. I had an analysis done of the soil and I discussed my plans with the architect and the geologist which um, which is necessary in Italy because if you're gonna move a lot of ground you need uh, permits well the soil I think it's uh, mainly uh, limestone and since it's on the top of a hill uh, the bottom layer it's pretty hard it's almost like rock if you if you break it open and you expose it to the elements it will become soil in time and back then when i noticed this i already envisioned that if i wanted to plant trees um, you know you really need to dig at least a meter and a half maybe more so the the roots can grow now if you say this to a permaculture man or woman they might not agree with you but i i do think that um, at least once the f 
in the initial round you 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 really have to prepare the the soil and the earth otherwise um, it's no no use so even then um, I was pretty sure that the only way to go was a terrace garden and actually uh, people have done this for centuries and even in these areas you have a lot of terraces but they are they tend to be high and made of natural stone so it's like each terrace can have like three to four meters height and uh, since I'm on the hilltop I, I want to create smaller terraces as we all know the terraces they collect uh, rainwater and this allows the rainwater to penetrate deeper into the earth so without terraces basically the rainwater is lost now my tree friend and close neighbor he has a small nursery, nursery and he's basically supplying all the, the trees and plants and bushes etc uh, he confided in me that it was excellent soil so So after uh, one year of absence I started uh, to work on uh, the second phase of uh, my um, terrace garden or food forest. The first thing were these containers. I got a good price and I had uh, 10 delivered and I wanted to put them in the lowest possible place so we excavated the terrace and I made a small counter wall uh, to place these containers because I want uh, to use them as retainers for rainwater coming from the roof of the house which is about 60 meters away from here and after I made this I wanted to do an experiment with the soil on the right side there is a small terrace it's not so high but I excavated about one meter and I mixed it with manure and uh, green materials, uh, brown material from the, from the wood, from the forest. And I basically planted some roses, table graves, things like that. Um, also some vegetables. And it, um, it was a good thing to do because uh, I noticed uh, six months later in the autumn that it really really improved a lot and then we started to work on the top terrace because I want to have basically two parts of about 60 to 80 meters long one below and one uh, a little bit higher and from there we started to do the intermediate terraces I had a friend come over for two weeks and we set ourselves a goal because I, I could never walk down very easy and I wanted to have a stair that's, I don't know, a natural staircase so we started to build these small intermediate terraces I thought to plant some olive trees uh, all the wood logs are made of castagne and basically sourced from the neighborhood in fact, uh, the hill across the house, they were cutting uh, trees and uh, when I ran out, I went there to ask them if I could buy some. Paid a little bit more money because they're still green, so they're more, uh, they're heavier and you, you pay uh, by, uh, by weight. The concrete poles, those were sourced from an old vineyard and I didn't really have any plan except that I thought okay you know uh, I will put them wherever I can whenever I build a terrace and they will always serve a purpose either for grapes, flower plants, climbing plants, beans, I don't know and then you see that all the um, the paths we're finished with cardboard and uh, wood chips but uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna hold back the 
the grass and the weeds. Then I made a connection from the old part to the new one. And while I was working, I thought, you know, why not make another staircase? You know, because the first one it's holding uh, kiwis. And the second one, I wanted to put uh, nice flowering plants like clematis and uh, honeysuckle. I think it looks amazing when I see this. So this corner is more like flowering corner. And um, then I started to work on the two big terraces. I don't know, they are 35, 40, 45 meters long. And this was really a gruesome, gruesome job. I think it took me like uh, six to eight weeks because at a certain point you you got in, into your rhythm and you know you have, uh, you can do like three meters um, a day, maybe four to five cubic meters of soil that has to be cleaned. You have to take out the small rocks, the stones, and then I reused everything that came out to build drywalls and pathways. If I look at it now, then I think, whoa, so much work every day, day in, day out. <laughs> but uh, the result is really nice, I, I, I have to say. After a while you are ready uh, and you wait for your trees to do, be delivered. I had to wait a little bit longer because uh, some of the trees that I wanted were not available, etc, etc. But uh, in the end, it's okay. So this one is the last terrace and it will only hold olive trees. I do think I planted way too many trees, but uh, all right. Uh, for now they can serve as a nursery. I still have to build another couple of terraces so I can replace them. And just like in 2020, really the day after I planted my, my trees, we had snow. And I think snow is fantastic because you just planted your trees and this, this water, it will go into your terrace and it will basically penetrate deep into the earth. And this is my list of trees. It's not everything, but most of them are, are here. Special notice for the apricots. I'm not sure if the No, the peach trees. The peach trees are difficult here. Hmm. So... The third part of my video will go for a walk through uh, my terrace garden on a beautiful day in uh, February. It seemed like spring already arrived. It's the upper level where I'm going to put uh, herbs mainly and flowers and I also planted some olive trees. Uh, these ones I took them with me from Holland. They are passion fruits. And I hope they will survive the winter and one day cover all this terrace here. They're also very nice for, for the bees. Right, you see now I used all these poles and here I have some garlic. <clears throat> Actually it's uh, the third year. Every year I harvest the garlic and I put uh, some up separate for planting in October, November. Uh, basically I put it a little bit everywhere because that's the whole idea I have, you know, it's, it's not... Yes, it's created by hand, but um, uh, in the future I hope that the whole terrace garden or well, may I call it my little food forest 
It's basically a place where you walk through and you find all kinds of uh, flowers, vegetables, fruits, depending on the season. Like here I have, uh, on the top I have strawberries, I have a lot of uh, table grapes. And uh, these poles I will also use them to grow beans. And in fact these uh, terraces, there are some with open spaces. Um, for the next year and a half, maybe two years, I will I will use them to grow my vegetables. But I do plan to to change that in the future, and maybe make this an area that is more covered with flowers. The pergola here, it's uh, my kiwi pergola, pergola. So I'm I'm not sure, but I I think I hope that maybe even this year it will be fully overgrown. And the, the wood I used is all castagne. Uh, again. Garlic everywhere. I like garlic and I like cooking so and that, that there's no bigger satisfaction than using your own garlic. So I have a corner here. This is the second staircase with the pergola. And that will be all uh, covered with uh, flowering uh, plants like uh, clematis and uh, the honeysuckle. That's my little terrace that I did the experiment with behind the tree. And in the back you see the new terraces built last autumn. And this is basically the oldest part. These are two years, so these pears, they have had a rough, rough year because it was very dry last year. Apricot. And this is what I like about nature. I don't remember, probably two years ago I, I put something there in the soil and it grows again my biggest trees are my plum trees I still have to prune everything but I'm waiting for March they look healthy even though it was very dry and I don't have an irrigation system in place yet so um, it's been tough for these trees on the other hand, I think if if they if they survived these two pretty dry years, maybe they'll even be stronger and uh, will thrive in the future. These are my almond trees, and that's my first olive tree. Oh, it looks fantastic! And that's my oldest almond tree. I left it there. And the middle branch that goes all the way in the top, I'm going to cut it in April, after it blossomed. I, I saw some videos online and, and if you want to change the shape of the almond tree, it's the best time, it's probably April. And then here on, the, on this, this part of the terrace I have a lot of apple trees, because I, they have some shade from the, the trees that I left in the forest below. So each year in autumn, I, it's not like I don't treat the soil anymore, so I, I just went over it once and the only thing I do is I cover it with straw. I prefer straw over hay, uh, it's more, uh, comp it's not compact, it's, it sticks together a little bit better and I think it's even better material, but that's personal opinion. And I am a romantic, so uh, that whole part has a uh, lavando everywhere. Yeah, you know, I did uh, plant way too many trees. I can see that now. 
but it's okay. They will serve as a nursery because I still have to build another six terraces. They are not that long, not like these ones. They will be like six, seven meters long. So I think every other tree I have to take one out and move it to a new terrace. But hey, like I said, it's a nursery and they can get used to the, the soil. Uh, this is the first year I also... Uh, uh, no, no, these are the pomegranates, I think. That's a pomegranate, yeah. So on the left side, that terrace that is still a little bit open, that's going to be um, only olive trees. Not 100% sure if that's the best place, because they don't have a lot of protection against the wind there, but I'll give it a try. Maybe these new trees will provide some um, protection for them. So, on the left you see some wooden poles. These are basically my markers and these are the terraces that, that I want to still build in, um, in the autumn of this year. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, probably five. The last two, um, I won't build any terraces there. In fact, right about here, I want to create a nice lake. Not just for rainwater retention, but also, uh, you know, it's it's a nice element in nature, even if it's ma handmade, a man-made. That's my straw. We are in the countryside, so it's pretty easy to to get all this material. It's basically from a guy downstairs. And here on the left, uh, I want to make my third and last natural staircase. So I can walk all the way down here, from up, from the property. And this is also the uh, two-year-old part of, uh, of my uh, forest garden. And I have to say, some trees, they did very well, but uh, some also had a very, very tough time. No irrigation, dry weather. Uh, so I hope they, they got a little bit tough and maybe they will still grow. The ones that grow really fast and almost everywhere here are the figs. They, they, they have a lots of production. I didn't expect that, but last year I think each tree produced at least 50 figs. And then I have these two pergolas, which one day I made by hand, and I thought uh, they would be covered with uh, grapes. Unfortunately, the deer, they ate all the leaves, so they didn't do, uh, do much growing. And uh, this year I, I protected them, and who knows, uh, maybe they will grow this year. So, in the end, I have some almonds on the left and I have uh, two apricots on the right. I also planted uh, a very, very young uh, olive, but it's doing remarkably well. Of course, here is the olive has the protection of the, of the wall behind it. And the rest of the forest, uh, for now, I left it like this. I don't, have, I don't really think I want to change anything here, but I, I do like the idea of maybe having a chicken coop around here and something like a staircase, because this one doesn't really work. And wouldn't it be wonderful if you can walk all, all the way down? And especially if you have a chicken coop, you need a good staircase. You know, uh, if you if you have to walk all around to get your eggs every day, I, I, I'd better not uh, have a chicken coop. And then there is the lower terrace, 
And this one is pretty wide. It's like uh, four, four and a half meters in depth. And it's very long. I started to cut some trees. I wanted to clean it out, but I don't have a lot of time at the moment. So it's a project probably for next year because this one is also south faced and this is the place where I would like to have my nursery and a nice greenhouse which you are allowed to build without any problem in uh, Italy and also in the back if I cut those trees I can have a nice uh, connect connection to the upper terrace because the terrace the terraces, they, they basically come together at some point. So, I will definitely make another video somewhere in spring and summer, autumn. Because uh, this is a big part of my project. I really like nature and I, I, I can't wait to see how it's going to develop. Um, these are other terraces, but for now they will be left untouched. Yeah, yeah, I need to clean that. Anyway, so if you like my uh, video and you like my channel, maybe you uh, can consider following me and uh, I'll keep you posted with some uh, some of the developments in the future. Thank you very much.